Hello everyone, and welcome to another video with me, Winner Android, where I'm now doing a timeline video for the series I did as the Kingdom of Romania over here on the 1936 Gathering of the Storm scenario, World War II scenario on the Mega Mod for Age of History 2, and yeah, got the Al alliances and everything, got allies, access, common turns, stuff like that. Though I think I did make a change where I kicked out all the vast colonies and everything out of the uh, allies and all that. Because chaos with how that just causes chaos with how this game works. So yeah, let's get this timeline started. Of course, got to Italy and Ethiopia. Yeah, they're fighting each other already. And the whole civil war in Spain, which already ended. So yeah, I've already taken our Bulgaria already. Great. Um, let's see. Not all that much happens right here at the beginning, but I know the next thing I do is Yugoslavia gets hungry to go to war with them to help me out and that's to deal with them. And then you also got all the colonies that starts rebelling from Britain and France, starting off with all Britons basically, and now France's colonies. Meanwhile, Indochina over here is getting taken over by I, that Chinese country and the Philippines, and yeah, Philippines got a little bit there, and they did as well. But yeah, well, the result of colonies rebelling, Britain's actually getting a lot of this up for stuff under their direct control at this point. I'm taking over all those other countries in the Balkans there. Next is going to be Hungary, and then finishing off Yugoslavia. Um, yeah. Looks like British Raj and China are at war with each other. And the British Raj has gotten independence at this point, if I remember correctly. But, uh, yeah, there you go, that's done. United States, apparently at war with them. Great. War with the Allies. But, yeah, I got the entirety of the Balkans on my control, and that's literally all I do for... next thousand turns, I think. Because I'm just kind of just decided to just... Build myself up a ton at this point. Increasing population, increasing the economy in the entire area. And yeah, that took absolutely forever for me to do. I do eventually get to the point where it, my population is like a fifth of the world's total population. Just there in the Balkans. But yeah, France basically took over Spain there with... French North Africa with that as well. Poland today trying to get that stuff from Denmark and Sweden, I think, as they took those over. British Raj and Britain at war with each other again. And yeah, Britain took over Spain, Turkey there. And that war just keeps on going forever. Got uh, that over here. In Africa now, because a rebellion that happened. I honestly don't understand what was going on over here with the whole war with the United States that they had going on with that stuff. Really don't understand it, but it ended up like that, apparently. South Africa is basically just Brazil and Argentina already. Um, let's see. French Western Africa took over the Netherlands. Germany took over Belgium, and also Estonia up there, and the Soviet Union as at war with Germany. And they do put up a good fight, but they do eventually lose. So that is Germany out of this already, and fall into the Soviet Union. Yeah. Portugal down here doing stuff by the looks of it. Italy got the Congo and Uganda. Uh, Brazil taking go or a good chunk of Argentina, though they did actually let them keep their capital rights there, though it's completely separated from the rest of their country. But yeah, let's see here. What else is going on? Or is still going on there. Never actually ends, to be honest. Um, 
I think that was Britain there. They've taken over more of Indochina. Good for them, I guess. Austria take, being taken over by Soviet Union. Switzerland goes to war with France, and, um, yeah. They're kind of kicking France's ass. Yeah. And that goes on for a while, I think. Because for some reason, France just cannot stop them. <laughs> I think it's mostly just due to the fact that France and Britain have just been fighting wars for so long at this point that they are just become super weak, that they are even struggling with Switzerland's there. I think that's what's going on here. I think. United States apparently has the Netherlands occupied currently. Hmm. And they have taken over the rest of it, French Indo Indochina over there. Great! Thailand to go over that stuff from the Dutch East Indies, okay. China is at war with Japan there. Hmm, okay. Let's see. British Raj is taking over Saudi Arabia now by the looks of it. Hmm, okay. China, of course, fell there. Italy ended up getting basically all of it. Somehow. Czechoslovakia was then end up becoming a vassal of Italy earlier in a very short war. Got taken over at this point and stuck over Poland as well. So yeah, that's that stuff there currently. Uh, Northern Rhodesia there with all that basically at this point. British Nigeria. Okay. Japan taking that stuff, and Italy taking that. Okay. And then you got that, which is now in the control of Italy and Japan. Great. Let's see. Eh, yeah, not all that much going on. Just that war continuing on still. Okay, Thailand and that country fight a war against each other, apparently. And also, you can see that Soviet Union has quite a few rebellions popping up over there. That's because I'm funding those rebellions, and yeah. Put shitloads of money into that, and just didn't work out at all, because all the rebellions were so fucking small. So I ended up resorting to getting a bunch of countries to go to war with the Soviet Union. And eventually go to war with them myself. And yeah, that worked out, though that was a very hard war, to be honest. Considering they were quite literally as strong as me, actually slightly stronger, considering that's how strong I had become, I was actually rivaling the Soviet Union. But yeah, I had a very large economy, because I just accidentally increased my economy so much. I just didn't actually realize how much I was increasing it to the point where I had like half the world's economy in my country alone. But then the Soviet Union kind of did start doing the same thing in Moscow. And their economy rivaled mine at that point. Which made them quite a large threat considering they were right there next to me. So yeah, kind of had to go out to the Soviet Union next just to make sure they didn't get too much stronger. But yeah, I ended up annexing the Soviet Union, considering I did get them as a vassal there, in that peace treaty where I took all that land. Annexed them afterwards, because, eh, they were trying to get independence and I didn't exactly want to let them go. And they were pretty weak after losing that war to me still. Took over Finland's there, and next up, is Italy and Japan. That's all I guess. And yeah, there we go. Goodbye to Italy and j kind of Japan, considering I did get peace with Japan early because I did not expect them to have as many troops as they did over here, and I had nowhere near enough troops to actually be fighting them over here in Asia. So I just got peace with them, taking over a good chunk of lands that they got, basically taking Malaysia and what they had over here in Myanmar, Burma. Also taking a little bit of Hokkaido, 
Korea and all that stuff there. And Italy at this point has been just left at the very southern end of Italy there and the Congo and Ethiopia stuff there, Horn of Africa. So yeah, I got everything else on the control. British Nigeria is basically split in two at this point between Nigeria and British Nigeria. Nigeria controlling most of this stuff at this point. But yeah, going to war with the United States, taking them over. And yeah, the United States had a pretty large army. Basically as large as the Soviet Union was. And that war was basically as deadly as the war with Soviet Union, but it didn't exactly look very hard, did it? Because that's just how large my army was at this point. Because I basically become an unstoppable force at this point. So yeah, I had, had a super large army just go and invade the United States there. And they just couldn't do anything to stop me. And the main reason why I actually went to the United States is because they're kind of starting to do the exact same thing the Soviet Union was doing. And making themselves very strong. And yeah, I just wanted to make sure I dealt with that before they got too far with it. And then of course, take over Canada afterwards. Guys, just wanted to get rid of that northern border I had. And then just kind of go after Mexico after that. Because, well, Mexico and Australia were the next two biggest threats at that point. That was before the United States had to take over that one Chinese country that was over here. But, eh, whatever. Not that big of a deal, just taking your country that large. But, yeah. All this stuff here is basically just me buying land from Brazil. At least all the stuff that they controlled. The rest of it was wars. I also just went through and bought all that they had in the Caribbean. All that's mine now. So for the most part, I bought most of Central America, with an exception of Mexico, of course. But yeah, also bought a good chunk of land from the United Kingdom over here after taking go Afghanistan and stuff. And at this point, I think I go after Australia, because yeah. They are at war with France, and I was planning to go after them next. So deal with Australia first, because they are annoying me, and we're the next largest threat anyway. So dealt with them, immediately went to war with France and Britain after that, and also British Raj over here, because I did not exactly want Japan to be getting too much land, so that kind of didn't exactly work out all that well, as you can see, considering all the land that Japan did get. It's like why did Japan take all of that going all the way up to there? It's like, why couldn't she have just taken, like, that instead? Seriously, I don't know, understand what's going on there, but yeah. I eventually get deal with that after dealing with all the rebellions and cleaning up this massive mess and everything with all the rebellions that happened during that massive long war between Britain and the British Raj. So yeah, clean up that entire mess over there in the Middle East and everything, and also in uh, France. And yeah, start dealing with this stuff over here, buying chunks of land over here from Japan. Spent shitloads of money buying all that, I'm pretty sure it was a few billion gold at least. And you can't exactly get billions of gold in this game very easily unless you've done what I did and make yourself ridiculously strong. So yeah, that's not something you can normally really do. Because AI just basically refuses everything. But yeah, got all that stuff. I do have all that as well over here in Africa at this point, considering I did get Libya and that stuff from Italy when I fought that war with them. And she yeah, cleans all that stuff up, took them over as well. Um, let's see. Then I finish off Japan, taking them over, and then I kind of just start a bit of a uh, cleanup and dealing with all these countries over here in the Iberian Peninsula and stuff. Brazil ended up eventually capitulating to a rebellion that happened over here, somehow. Don't know exactly how that happened, but it did, and that became end up becoming British Somaliland, so yeah, that's a thing at this point. 
I shall eventually clean all that stuff up, taking Garby in there, cleaning that up. Tried multiple times to buy land from South Africa over here and getting this stuff. French North Africa for that and stuff from Rhodonesia, just, but they just refused to accept anything. Oh, I did get Rhodonesia to accept it, like giving me half of Kenya there and a little bit up there. But yeah, end up taking over French North Africa and then deal with South Africa there as well. At some point took over the Philippines and the British Kailan over there as well to finish off Asia. Deal with British Somalilands, get all that stuff done, and then Argentina and Venezuela, of course, to finish off South America. And then, after dealing with Venezuela, of course, it is just these two over here. Print Central African Republic being a vassal of Rhodonesia there, so deal with them all, both of them at the same time, and they actually and it's still surprisingly long considering they just did not it late until I basically took over their entire country. But yeah, that there is the entire timeline for this series. And yeah. That's the population. Now it's working on for those thousand turns at the beginning of the game. Yeah. And then economy as well, I guess. That's what Soviet Union did to Moscow still makes up nearly six or fifteen percent of my economy. I haven't even touched the darn thing since I took it. But yeah, that's there is that done. Didn't really get to see Australia, Antarctica down here considering eh, there wasn't really anything going on down there, so I just ignored it. But Australia started with like a good chunk of that along with Britain basically, and that's it, to be honest. No one else actually had any land down there. Though, of course, other countries did colonize a bit, but it says largely nothing ever happening down there in the first place, so largely just ignore it. But, yeah, that's there is the end of this video, so yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye